So we have a five mark grade nine ratios question, and this will probably test if you actually understand ratios or if you don't. If you do understand ratios, this question is actually fairly easy, fairly simple. And if you don't understand ratios, hopefully when I go through this, it'll kind of explain it to you better and you'll be able to score those marks in your exam. Um, once again, if you find this video useful or any other videos that I've ever done, please do consider subscribing as it really does help me out. But let's get on with the video. So how would I do this? Well, the first thing I'll do is I'll kind of highlight the key information. So we know P is bigger than Q. That's probably going to be useful in a second. And it says when you subtract five from P and subtract five from Q, you have a ratio of five to one. So we could write out that ratio right now. They're saying that the ratio of P minus five to Q minus five is the same as five to one. That's what they're saying, right? When we subtract five from P and subtract five from Q, they're in the ratio of five to one. The other piece of information they give us is that when you add 20 to P and add 20 to Q, the answer in the ratio of five to two. Now, what I've just done over here is a super, super common thing in the higher level ratio questions, where they'll expect you to be able to translate this information into a ratio. And then normally what happens is you make this into an equation and you solve it. The problem is we have two unknowns. We have P and Q. So we can't solve it straight away because two unknowns means we need two equations. And that's why they've given us this third line over here. So when we do P plus 20 to Q plus 20, oh, wait, no, I can change that. There we are. We get five to two. Now, what do we do? Well, the first thing I want to show you is what does this mean when two ratios are equivalent? Well, hopefully you'll all agree that if I do four to two, that is equal to two to one because I can just divide both sides by two. Now, the statement that you can stay from that is this. For equivalent ratios, for equal ratios, you can equate them if you divide the two parts. So if I do four divided by two, it's the same as two divided by one. Likewise, I can do two divided by four is equal to one divided by two. That's the meaning of the ratio because remember, ratios represent proportion. So they're saying that four to two, the relationship between them you, is the same as two to one. So if I times two by a number, I get four. If I times one by the same number, I get two. In this case, the answer is two. So how can we use that in this case? Well, as long as I'm consistent, I can do P minus five over Q minus five is equal to five over one, or Q minus five over P minus five is one over five. What you can't do is just say, oh, P minus five equals five, Q minus five equals one, because the ratio could have been simplified. Right? In this case, 4 is not equal to 2 and 2 is not equal to 1. So let's do that. We have P minus 5 over Q minus 5 equals 5 over 1. I'll write it as 5 over 1 for now, but of course that's just 5. And for this one over here, we're going to have the exact same thing. Already I've got two marks from writing the ratios and also writing them as fractions. So that's nice and easy. Now, we have two equations and two unknowns, so you can probably guess that we're going to be doing simultaneous equations. So the first thing I would do is, and again, you can cross multiply, which I think is probably the fastest way to do this, where you basically move them up like this. But essentially, that's the same as just timesing both sides by the denominator, <laughs> denominator of each of them. So here we get P plus 20 equals 5 over 2 Q plus 20 and then times both sides by 2, you get 2, P plus 20, equals 5, Q plus 20. If you look, that is the same as if I just cross multiplied them, I get the exact same thing. So the cross multiplying is a bit of a shortcut. So here I get P minus 5 equals 5, Q minus 5. Now all I need to do is I need to rearrange one of these equations for P or Q and sub it into the other. And honestly, I think both are equally kind of annoying, if I'm being honest, but yeah, if we just move the 5 over, that might be the best way to do it. There is actually a shortcut way to do this, but I don't think most people would have spotted that. So if I expand those brackets, I get 5q minus 25, then plus 5. So p is just equal to 5q minus 20, then sub this in for p over here. Okay, sure. I get t, t, 2. 5q minus 20 plus 20 
equals 5 q plus 20. Of course, those mi that minus 20 and plus 20 cancel out. Expand the brackets, we get 10q, you're welcome, equals 5q plus 100 minus 5q from both sides, we get 5q equals 100, which means q is equal to 20. That's the first answer. And then all I need to do is sub this back into this equation over here to get your other solution. So we get p is equal to 5 times 20 minus 20. So p is equal to 100 minus 20. I also get asked sometimes, why do I write every single step? It's because in the most common mistake I see with high level students and with most students in general, but especially those doing GCSEs or A-levels, is when they skip over steps, they sometimes make dumb mistakes. And if you write every step out like this, it's near impossible to make a mistake. And because I'm recording a video, I don't want to make a mistake. And when I'm teaching in either tuition or in in-person classes, like at school, I write every single step out so I don't make a mistake, but also so that the other person can see what I'm doing or the other people can see what I'm doing. And you should have that same mindset in your exam is you want your examiner to have the easiest possible job in marking your work. And you don't want to make mistakes because silly mistakes are very hard to spot. So and I've seen many, many different types of mistakes where people don't multiply everything by a number or whatever, but that's all there is. And if you look, the actual math itself isn't that bad. Like the algebra is simultaneous equations. You've done this before. Maybe you need some practice on it, I don't know. But the, probably the hardest bit is, is the part at the beginning. A lot of students forget this, which means you won't just lose one mark, you actually lose all five. So the first step, if you don't know the first step, you lose all five marks. So do be very careful with that, but hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Hopefully that's kind of tested um, your knowledge of ratios. If you managed to get it, do let me know in the comments. If you didn't manage to get, get it either, let me know, see what part you understand up to. But I'll leave you to your revision and I'll see you in the next one.